Hey guys, uh, I get a lot of emails and a lot of questions about you know what the best survival knife is. Um, well, there's a lot of really good knives out there. I'm not gonna lie, uh, tons and tons of them. And a lot of times it's it's preference. You know, some people prefer one thing over the, over another, different sizes. But I have to say, you really cannot go wrong with a really good fixed blade. And uh, what you're looking at right now is my favorite setup for just general outdoors. Uh, of a blade and that is a full-size 7 inch fighting k-bar and of course its companion here uh, this is a full custom sheath from Hedgehog Leatherworks and I will have a full separate um, review on this sheath uh, but this video is just on the uh, on the k-bar so I put that aside and I'm talk about the knife now this one uh, as you can see here is all blacked out and man doesn't that look good with that gleaming, shiny, sharpened edge on that, you know, contrasting with that all black. Just fantastic. Uh, I believe this is a powder coat that they use on the blade for a coating. And uh, the handle is Kraton. Now you might notice uh, a little bit different. A lot of the, the K-bars you might be used to seeing are actually the, uh, the stacked leather handles. Okay, that's a lot more, lot more common. The reason being is that... Uh, K-bars have been around uh, since World War II. Actually, before wo World War II. Uh, it's only during World War II where uh, they actually got a, a contract with the government to make this the, um, the issued knife for the United States Marine Corps, the uh, USMC. And there's over a million uh, supplied to the government for issuing. So uh, when you hear the name K-bar, uh, it's the reason everyone knows what it is is because it was a military issued knife for many 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 years and I believe still is today in 2010 um, now when I when I talk about knives with different people and I try to talk about knives with people who don't have a big interest in them I, I found that uh, generally there's three different knives or knife companies that people know about even if they're not into knives you can pretty much grab a random person off the street and they're gonna know about them uh, one is the K-Bar and for that reason, it was a military knife. Um, two is the um, buck knives. People generally know about buck knives. And then, of course, three is Swiss Army knives, more specifically Victorinox. But generally, people know all about those, even if they're not into knives. Um, but again, that's, that's the history there, is uh, this was a military knife. It was issued for many, many years and served many soldiers very well. Uh, fantastic knife. But again, the biggest difference here is that this is a newer version with the um, Kraton handle as opposed to the stacked leather. Sorry about that guys, that was actually a first. Uh, instead of my battery dying, my memory card was full. <laughs> so it shut off on me. Uh, anyway, I was just mentioning how this has the Kraton uh, handle, which is different from the stacked leather handle. Um, as far as durability, uh, I would imagine this is maybe a little bit more durable, but it's minute differences. The, the stack leather handles, like I said, I've seen them. Uh, I've actually seen the original ones from the, the early 1930s. Or they're still kicking today in 2010. Uh, so I don't think that's a big issue there. Uh, as far as the way it feels, it does feel a little bit different. Uh, this feels a little bit more stiff than the, the stack leather versions, at least the ones I've had before. Although it does have a little bit of give. Um, it still feels uh, very stiff for a handle. But it, it's, it is comfortable. It's comfortable in the hands. It feels good. Um, of course, you have the pommel here, which is also powder coated. The whole thing's black. Uh, I've seen people use this as an improvised hammer. Of course, if you do want to use it as a hammer or makeshift hammer or to slam on things, uh, please do put your sheath back on the blade. You don't want to be swinging, swinging that blade by your head. Okay, not smart. Um, but if you put the sheath on, yeah, you can use it as a hammer. It'll, it'll take the beating. Um, so that's cool. Your pommel, uh, of course, in a fighting. Uh, scenario uh, that would be your skull crusher and someone takes a whack in the, the temple or the top of the head with uh, with this baby and it will it will crack their skull <laughs> and they'll definitely be in a, a world of pain um, but very functional of course you have the double hand guard here keeps your hand from slipping up on on the blade if you're using it real hard uh, or if your hands are wet um, but overall it's a fantastic knife like I said it really needs no introduction you guys know all about this knife uh, I'm not telling you anything new um, I do want to read a little um, a little story for you. This is direct from uh, K-Bar's website. Okay, I actually printed out here. This is word for word uh, on K-Bar's website of how they got the name K-Bar. 
I thought it was pretty interesting, so I figured for this review I would read it to you. Uh, only take a minute here, so here we go. It says, uh, How K-Bar Got Its Name. Soon after its introduction in the mid-1920s, the K-Bar trademark became widely known and respected. There have been many versions of how the K-Bar name came to be, but all evidence points to a letter received from a fur trapper. This particular fur trapper's testimonial turned out to be the most significant ever received by the company. He wrote in very rough English that his gun had jammed and that he had therefore relied on his knife to kill a wounded bear that was attacking him. In thanking the company for their quality product, the trapper described using his knife to kill the bear. All that was legible of his letter, uh, or his, of his crawled writing, uh, was the letter K, the letter A, and then B-A-R. The company was so honored by his testimonial that they adopted this phrase and used it as their trademark, K-Bar. I thought that was a really cool story, and uh, I've never heard that story until I went to the website uh, recently and, and read it. And I thought it was really cool and I wanted to share it with you guys. Uh, so basically how they got the name was some, some fur trapper, some uh, hunter, you know, a mountain man. Basically uh, his gun jammed on him, and uh, he had this bear attacking him, which he shot who knows how many times, but now it's, it's attacking, attacking him, excuse me, and uh, he took him out with his K-Bar. Uh, which wasn't the name of the knife at, at that point. It was something else. It was a different company. Um, and this is in the early 20s. So uh, so basically he wrote this letter to the company saying how awesome that was. But the only thing they could really make out of the letter, because uh, his English was so bad, was those letters. K-A-B-A-R. So they decided to rename the company K-Bar. Uh, I thought that was really cool. Like I said, I just wanted to share the story with you. I'm sure it's something you uh, won't forget. And every time you see a K-Bar, you remember it. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, so anyway, that's pretty pretty much just the gist of it. Excuse me. I can give you specs on this knife, but you know, again, a lot of you guys already know, but I'll go over it anyway, real quick. Seven inch blade. Uh, the whole knife is just under twelve inches. I, by the way, I apologize if I already did this in the first part of the review. Uh, I forgot what I had said now. Um, but anyway, it's eleven and three quarter inches long. Um, as far as weight, uh, K bar site says 0.66 pounds. So let's see, 0.66 pounds, I would say it's roughly around 9 ounces or so. Um, it's, it's heavy, but for this size, fixed blade is not as bad as some other fixed blades I've had. Could be worse, but it's a hefty knife, which is good when you're chopping. You, you, the extra weight helps quite a bit. Um, it is made completely in the United States. Again, uh, I believe I already mentioned this, but in Olean, New York, as stamped on the blade. And it is a combination of 1095 carbon steel and craton for the handle. Um, let's talk a little bit about price. This knife here cost me the knife and this sheath that came with it, which I didn't show yet. This is a uh, molded plastic sheath. Um, it works, does its job. Kind of snaps in place there. Um, the knife with the sheath here was $75. Um, that's about average. Uh, give or take a couple bucks depending on where you're buying it. But $75 bucks ain't bad, really, for the sheath knife combo. Uh, you can get just a knife, if you're not interested in the sheath, you can get just a knife for about $60 to $65. Um, again, this specific version, I'm not sure if it's more expensive or less for the leather. Um, but it's in and around that price. Uh, this sheath, it, it's not bad at all, like I said. I mean, it fits, it works, it does its job. Um, there is a, a button snap here. Now, I never really touched upon this before, but I don't think button snaps are really necessary for fixed blades for the handle. I mean, if it has a good sturdy snap into the sheath, you don't need this. It's kind of redundant. Unless perhaps you uh, mount this um, upside down on your gear or on yourself or something, then I could say, okay, well, it's good to have an extra extra bit of security there. But as far as a knife that you might need to use in a pinch, an emergency situ situation, excuse me, uh, uh, maybe fighting where an enemy is uh, attacking you and you're on a uh, you know close quarters combat, um, to undo that snap, it takes more time. You want to just grab your knife and take it out. Uh, if you're in the woods, let's say you're not a soldier or something, and that's not an issue for you, well, guess what? You're walking around the woods, and this is snapped, and maybe an animal jumps out at you. Uh, maybe it's a bear you accidentally uh, walked upon. Maybe it's um, a mountain lion, <laughs> which, again, you won't see until uh, after it's already attacked you because they're quite stealthy. Um, but you need to grab your knife real quick, and, oh, no, I forgot to grab the snap, and i got to take the snap off, and... It's just a delay, a delay you don't need. So, I don't know, I'm not a big fan of those snaps. But anyway, that's kind of off topic. The sheath itself is, it's decent. It's definitely decent. Um, it's got a nylon attachment on the back here, which you uh, use for your belt. 
And of course, if you want to use this tab here, again, for different mounting options, there are plenty of eyelets here um, to mount that. You can put some paracord. Because this is longer, I would suggest with longer sheaths to put some paracord or any kind of cord through the bottom holes, if you have them, to tie around your thigh. Okay, this way when you're walking, it's not swinging around, it's sturdy to your leg. Okay, makes less noise if you're out in the woods or, again, maybe in a tactical situation, um, and it's more sturdy. It's not going to bounce around and get caught on things. So, anyway, that's the sheath. Uh, of course, I love this one a lot better. It's like night and day for me. Um, but again, that's for a separate review. Uh, <laughs> little uh, leather cameo there. Um, but anyway, yeah, you guys know all about this knife, the K-Bar. It's a sick knife. It's crazy. People love them. I love them. You can't go wrong. I mean, you can beat the crap out of these things, and they keep on ticking. Awesome, awesome knife. Uh, if you're into knives, you got to own at least one in your lifetime. Just check it out. It is a fantastic knife. Can't go wrong. So that's the full-size 7-inch K-Bar uh, fighter in the Kraton version. So, uh, once again, guys, thank you so much. I always appreciate you watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I wish you the best of luck. Take care.